What's up guys? So welcome back to another FX tutorial. So recently, there has been plans to come out with a new iteration of the Grudge movie. And the poster that came out some time ago caught my eye. So today we'll be recreating our own version of that poster and a couple other Grudge related pictures as well. And joining me here today is... JK. Hey guys, my name is Tyra and I will be today... I'll be today's um, muse. I will be in the pictures. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at TEZUS. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. All right, y'all. Let's get started. Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> so first thing first, guys, I'm gonna need the light we're just going to um, you know, wet her hair just a little bit. Get that wet texture feel for the photo. And yeah. Good. Let me see. Sweet. So I had her face the wall and run her fingers through her hair just like the person in the grudge poster. We ended up taking several shots such as these, which ultimately did not fit the whole vibe for the picture we wanted to create. This is so really good. gonna mess up the bathroom. This feels so good. I just put in the bathroom today too. So we turned on the shower to make it look like she actually had water running down on her, but it did create a few problems for us, such as her equipment getting wet including myself, and lenses fogging up. No, not really. I'm <laughs> so hot. Oh, it's so hot. It's, oh my gosh, it's so hot. What are you gonna do, burn me alive? We eventually turned out the water and utilized the wet look to our advantage. The key to taking these photos is to set up your camera on a tripod and to have your model pose as still as possible while you're taking different hand placement shots, as you can see here. The less movement you have, the easier the Photoshop process will be. It also helps to have controlled lighting as we did in our bathroom environment here. After capturing the shots we needed, we analyzed the photos we took and utilized the ones that would work the best. Out of the 16 we took for this, we ended up using these four photos. So let's get into Photoshop. The original shot with her just gripping her head became the base photo. I started off by dragging the image with my left hand reaching for the camera onto the base photo using the move tool. After lining up the photo, I created a new layer mask here and then pressed Ctrl I to switch the mask to black, hiding that top layer. On the left side of the screen, I made sure to set my foreground layer to white, allowing me to uncover parts of the hidden layer using the brush tool. So as you can see, I brushed in the hand I wanted to use, but the shot was not lined up with the original shot. Easy fix though. I just used the move tool to slightly move the layer down to line it up. There is a mistake right here I didn't see at first, but eventually I do fix it in the end. Moving on, I do replicate the same steps for the next layer, but the process did slightly change up for the last layer. I noticed that in our version that our hand was resting on top of the head, unlike the poster, where it seemed like it was actually coming from the inside of the head. To try to match the aesthetic, I had to set my foreground layer to black to cover up the parts of the hand I did not want to use. I got very detailed into what I wanted to show, so I constantly zoomed in the parts of the photo and adjusted my brush size accordingly. In the end, I get very close to the aesthetic I once seen, but does not quite work just yet. I have to use a clone stamp tool now, but in order to use it effectively, I had to select all my layers, right click, and then select flatten image. The clone stamp tool allows you to capture parts of the image and essentially clone that part over another area of the photo. Using alt and left click on a part of the picture will save that clone image. So the overall idea is to clone parts of the hair on top and create more hair on top of the fingers that don't seem to be coming from inside of the head. I do end up extending my thumb just a little bit in the end and also blurring it out slightly to match the depth of field of that particular area in the photo. The next part I had to complete was to darken the photo just a little bit. 
I used the quick selection tool to select Tyra to lower her levels down, then selected the inverse to lower the levels of the background a bit more than Tyra herself. I used Lightroom next to complete the final steps for the photo. I did end up playing around with the tones to get similar tones with the poster, but with some of my own taste. With that out of the way, I needed to change the skin color and definition of the hands and fingers protruding out of her body. On the right hand side, I used the adjustment brush and created new settings. Specifically, I had the saturation down to negative 80 on each hand. I played around with the contrast, highlights, shadows, clarity, and sharpness as well. In the end, I found out I had to create new settings for each finger on the top hand and new settings for the hands on the bottom. The lighting and depth of field, while not obvious, were different enough to the point where the first setting I created will not look right on the rest of the hands and fingers. It took me about 35 minutes to create the 7 settings you see on display here. Alright guys, that's pretty much all we did to create the first photo. We took some well lined up and similarly lit photos, photoshopped it all together, and then used Lightroom to blend all elements of light and color. I did a poll on my Instagram if you guys wanted me to add in blood, and a lot of you guys said yes, so here's a quick speed run on how I added the final blood effects. Our final photo has Tyra staring dead face into the camera, with half of her face consumed by the grudge, and some additional texture work hidden in the background, and her right eye. I have this newer on-camera light source that I use to simply rotate around her face. I did end up turning off the additional light source we were using, and also use the same camera settings. Once I got the lighting that I liked, I simply snapped away and got these three photos. I used this photo in the final shot. So I start off photoshopping things as usual. I found a lot of the textures I used from the internet by simply googling PNGs such as blood, rust, and dirty textures. Once I found the images that would work the best for a photo, I essentially placed most of the textures in the background. Since the background was blurred significantly, this would be really easy to blend. I went into the filter tab and selected blur, then Gaussian blur. Here the variable of 50 pixels seemed to blend the best. If the texture was too bright or too dark, I changed the brightness and contrast. It really depends on how you guys shoot your pictures and what textures you guys end up using. In the layers tab on the bottom right, I played around a lot with the blend modes. It helped a lot and it's something I recommend you guys use as well. The last thing I photoshop is a blood texture on her right eye. I wanted it to consume her eyeball but not her pupil completely. I use the exclusion blend mode to bring it all together. On to Lightroom again. Like I said, half of her face was consumed by the grudge, and I wanted to depict that by having her left side turn grayish. I used the adjustment brush again and set the saturation to negative 80, along with setting the clarity to 19 and highlights to negative 57. Thank you guys for watching our latest video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you all have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. Also, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Follow us on Instagram and leave a link to your own version of the grudge photo. We would love to see it. As always, happy editing. Okay. Hello. Hello. Which, uh...